Good morning all, new printed circuit boards from JLC PCB and this one is a little bit different because this one has parts on it. So let's see what we've got. Now I have opened this already because I wanted just to check what I was getting and yes essentially it's what I thought I was going to get. Let's get in a little bit closer. So what we have here is, well, 10 PCBs on five panels. Let me take one of the panels. And I had to panelize this because my PCB is very small. It's one inch by half an inch. So that's 25.4 millimeters by 12.7. Now the minimum PCB size for the assembly service is 20 by 20. So I had to make this um, two boards up on a panel and also you can't use the V scoring service. And something else to mention, this is a single sided assembly service. So I requested that the parts were fitted on the bottom side, uh, on the top side here. And you can see this is my PWM5 Femto version two. There are no components fitted here. Now I can fit those components. There aren't many of them. I think there are six surface mount components. And one of those actually is the microcontroller. And since this board doesn't offer in-circuit programming, I am going to have to program the microcontroller before I solder it on. So I will fit these six parts, but JLC PCB fitted this lot. So this is the assembly capabilities list on JLC PCB's website. And I will link to all the pages I show so you can take a look at these if they've changed since this video. So we have single sided placement, which is why I only put parts on the bottom side, although you can choose either the bottom side or the top side. Uh, less than 100 pieces, single or panelized PCB, only except two or four layer, and it has to be green. You can't use the other colors currently. One mil, 1.2 or 1.6 millimeter board thickness and one ounce copper weight. Now here's the restriction that meant I had to panelize my board minimum 20 by 20 and max 480 by 320. Uh, the numbers are slightly different if you go for four layer. They have 689 basic components and some of those basic components I chose for my board and 30,000 plus extended components. And I also used some of the extended components on my board too. And if you click on this link here, you can uh, go through the entire library of the parts that are available. Um, laser cut stainless steel stencil, um, which is free of charge and not delivered with the assembled board. So I don't have the stencil. It was made, used, and then presumably recycled. And the soldering method is lead free, although that's not quite what I chose. So back to my board. Now this is the bottom side with the components fitted. That's the top side where I chose not to fit components. This is a panelized uh, well, panel. This is a PCB that's uh, been panelized into two PCBs on a panel. It's a very tiny panel, but I deliberately chose this because I wanted to choose the minimum size that I knew could be assembled. And incidentally, they've added a couple of holes here, which I think are fiduciary holes, uh, some sort of mounting hole so that they can assemble the parts because I didn't put that hole there next to the regulator or that hole. So that's been added by JLC PCB. So let's just go through some of these components. I'm pretty sure the regulator here, which is an HT7550-2 regulator, is an extended component. So there was an additional cost. Now it does say here uh, $3 per extended component. And the reason for that is the basic components are sitting in their uh, reels mounted on the pick and place machines. And so no additional work has to be done for those. But the extended components have to be located, mounted on reels, um in positions where they have uh, spaces for extended components so i've got a funny feeling that um, most of these resistors and perhaps some of the capacitors are basic components the regulator the tantalums are extended components i think these transistors are extended components although one of them i think was in the basic components selection list but bizarrely i chose not to use it now you'll notice there, there's a component that's not actually been fitted. This is uh, essentially a 1N4148 diode, but in surface mount type. And that's because I picked 
a component when I was going through my bill of materials that doesn't actually fit on this footprint. And because it doesn't fit, JLC PCB didn't actually uh, fit it when they came to do the surface mount assembly. Now for panelization, I've used the stamp holes um, technique, which is just these rows of holes. So these could be, well, actually, let's try it. These could be broken out. It's going to take a little bit of force. Oh, yeah, it takes a bit more force than I thought it was going to. But uh, yeah, that does work. It breaks along the line where the holes have been drilled. Uh, I can break that piece off with some pliers. Let's just do that to make sure it's possible. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. And there's my individual uh, PWM5 Femto version 2 PCB, which now has the LED on the top side. Because I made a mistake on the previous one, I put the LED in amongst the bottom side components and then it kind of got obscured by the connecting wires. Now you can't fail to have noticed that there are only components fitted on one of the PCBs on my panel and that was intentional. Uh, if you get components fitted to all the PCBs on your panel, particularly if you've got uh, quite a lot up on your panel, then of course there is going to be a cost associated with that. So I just got them to assemble one of the PCBs on my panel um, we'll look at the costs later on, but let's just look at the Easy EDA screen um, to see the layout of this. So here I am in Easy EDA, and this is my uh, PCB. This is uh, the one off version of the PCB, and you can see uh, the top side, and that's essentially the bottom side of the board. But let me switch now to the panelled version or panelized version and you can see here I used the auto panelize and it creates this second panel and you don't actually have to um, copy all of the elements uh, that are on your first panel onto the other panels. I could have done this uh, with more PCBs on a panel. In fact there's a remark there that says only panelize the board outline all PCB factories support this panelized file. So you just leave the second part blank, but there the um, PCB house actually puts the uh, pads and tracks and holes in all of your panels. So that's why on the screen of my PCB design software, Easy EDA, none of this lot shows up. This is just a blank panel. But the PCB house understands that uh, you want a copy of that and they uh, make up that second PCB for you. However, that doesn't necessarily translate to SMT assembly because you could have uh, quite a few of these up. Say I meant did 12 up and then you'd have 12 times the number of components and that could be a substantial cost if you're not careful. So when you do a bill of materials export, which you do have to do when you use this SMT service, it only exports uh, the design on your screen, so the one PCB. Now you could uh, quite easily add into the bill of materials the parts for your other PCB, or if you had, say, a four up, you could um, add in additional parts for the four up, but that would have to be a manually done process. At least that's the situation as it stands at the moment as I found it. Now let's check a few of these components. So I've set my meter to capacitance. So I know that these two up here are 47N. Let's just check that. Uh, yeah, 47.6N. Let's check the one next to it. And that's uh, 48.2. Let's check another couple over here. These will vary, of course, because they do have a tolerance, 45.9. But essentially, they're the correct component, 47N. OK, let's check these tantalums. Um, this one here is one microfarad. Let's check that. So that's 0.942. Does that actually say microfarad? Yes, it does. Okay, let's switch to ohms and check some of the resistors. Uh, this one is 220K. And that's showing up as 219. Drifting a bit because it's a high value. This one is 4K7. And yep, that's 4.7K. 
Uh, this one is either 20k or 82k. I can't actually read it from this distance. Okay, that's 82k. And this one with the little 220 puff across it is 20k. And that's reading 20k. So on this uh, pricing, we've got here in the SMT assembly facts, what does your quoted price include? The PCB assembly pricing includes engineering fee, assembly fee, and of course the component cost. We do not charge setup fees or stencil fees. We will offer a huge discount for SMT assembly. Please stay tuned. So we'll keep an eye on that one and see what uh, JLC PCB come up with in the future. Right, so now I'm looking at um, my actual account on JLC PCB because I just wanted to look at the parts for SMT assembly. So here's the board and you can see the Gerber viewer here for the actual PCB. Now the PCB was only two dollars because of course it's their minimum uh, pricing. Uh, doesn't show that second set of um, layout but of course that does get made as I mentioned. But if I look at product details for the SMT assembly, what actually comes up is a list of all the parts that I used in this uh, project. So for example, here you can see that I've got uh, the low dropout regulator. I'm not sure if you can see that um, box that's come up over the top. It's uh, LDO, positive fix, 55 millivolts, one milliamp, 30 volts in, five volts out, blah, 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 SOT 89. Now that was 30 cents, and of course there are five of them, so that's $1.52. It's also an extended part, so that would have cost an additional $3 to actually put that part in the feeder mechanisms. Um, it, that's a one-off cost, so of course the more panels or the more PCBs you put on your panel, the more you can amortize that cost. Uh, the transistors, this was either the 3904 or the 3906. Oh, it's NPN, so that's the 3904. That is uh, 11 cents. There are five of those. The tantalum capacitors, of course, are expensive. And I probably could have used multi-layer ceramics for this, but I just liked the idea of using these tantalums. There's a one mic there. There's a 4.7 mic there. The 4.7 is 33 cents, five of those. The one mic is 24 cents, 10 of those. So you can see how this adds up and why you might want to be careful about peppering all the PCBs on your panel <laughs> with parts. You've got to uh, watch the cost. You can see at the bottom of this list, we have the basic parts. We've got multi-layer ceramic capacitors and you can hover over these images to um, see the size of that part. Uh, surface mount resistors, lots of resistors, and another capacitor at the bottom. Now here's that switching diode, and um, this one is a SOD123, and in fact if you hover over the image, you can see that that's, well at least three millimeters wide for the body, and probably about, getting on for four millimeters wide, if you include the foot pads. And this, and it was my mistake, is really the wrong component for the footprint that I put on my PCB. So you may be able to see if I bring the camera down that, well, it's this uh, footprint on this corner here. And I don't know whether you can see, you can probably see um, from this, which is 10 millimeters, that doesn't appear to be four millimeters. It's more like, I don't know, two and a half. So I'm pretty certain that this diode was meant to be um, what's called an 0805 diode to fit on that space. And I do have some of those diodes, but the part I selected, which was the SOD 123, surface mount diode, a small outline diode, I suppose, um, is going to be bigger than that. And that's probably why it didn't get fitted on the board because there's no way they would have been able to solder it down because it just doesn't fit on that pad. So here are some of my surface mount parts, um, which I was using on my V1 PCB. Let's take a look at that little 0805, essentially a 1N4148 diode. So here is the uh, diode which I originally bought and used as a design or as a uh, footprint for this board and it is extraordinarily small. 
I can't even do it with that. Where are my tweezers? So that's the diode. Uh, that's the cathode that way around. So yeah, the 0805 diode fits on that footprint, but it would appear that the SOD 123 is a bigger device and doesn't fit on my board. Let's have a closer look at that. Yeah, so that's where the diode goes. And I mean, there's no problem. I can solder that diode. I have the stock. <laughs> Question is, do I have the dexterity? Now there is one of one other thing, and it was a bit naughty of me to do this, but um, when you select the coating, I selected Hassel, which is um, hot air solder leveling, I believe, but it's with lead. So the coating on this board is with lead, but the assembly service actually uses a lead free solder paste uh, that then gets reflowed. And there doesn't seem to be a problem, probably isn't a good idea to select hassle. You should probably select the lead free coating, but certainly it seems to have worked uh, using a lead free solder on a leaded uh, coating on the board. The components are all fitted and they seem to be stuck on there. So have you used this service yet? Um, I'm not sure how early I was as a user. I was talking to GLC PCB when I was um, preparing this board and they were saying it's not quite ready yet, not quite ready yet. And I kept trying it and then one day it just kind of worked. So I think I got to use it quite early on. But uh, yes, yeah, very interesting. Um, have you sent a panelized PCB and had the assembly service and uh, were your uh, results the same as I've got here? So there it is. There's my uh, PWM5 Femto version 2 board with the LED now on the top side. Uh, made by JLC PCB and with the components assembled for me so that I don't have to do it. So that was a little look at um, my first use of JLC PCB's surface mount assembly service. Um, the components I wanted fitted are fitted, barring the diode, which was my mistake. I can solder that on. I will fit all the top side components, the microcontroller, uh, the big 1206 LED, and its series resistor. And there are a couple of dual diodes here. I've got to program, of course, the microcontroller before I fit it on. And then this board uh, will be a fully functioning, world's smallest uh, PWM solar charge controller where I haven't had to do all of the work. And uh, this is quite good timing because um, during the summer, there's been enough energy coming through just that center panel into that center battery through the through hole version of my PWM5 that I haven't actually needed a PWM5 fitted to the other two lead acid batteries. But of course, as winter sets in, and we get less sun and shorter days, I'm going to need to put a PWM5, and I'll probably go for the Femto version, on the two um, outside batteries there. So I've now got uh, those boards ready to make up those two additional charge controllers, and then I can use the energy from all three of these solar panels. And uh, just in case you're wondering, yes, the UV glue does make an absolutely perfect enclosure for these things. Uh, it's a conformal coating but it's also a perfectly weatherproof case and uh, yeah this PWM5 is still working absolutely perfectly so I think I'll probably not bother to enclose the Femto versions. I'll just coat them in UV glue. Cheerio!